Hey everyone, welcome, welcome, welcome. Just wanna say thank you all for stopping by. We're gonna get started. Um, I'm Randy Chambers, I have my beautiful wife. Veronica Chambers. And uh, we're gonna get this ball rolling, but real quickly, just to tell you a quick background by myself, I'm born and raised in the New Orleans area. I became a struggling um, teenage father at the age of 19. Uh, I was at risk youth myself growing up. In 2005, I lost everything I owned in Hurricane Katrina in 2005. And from there, um, at that moment, I had less than $500 in my bank account. My credit score was horrible in the low 500s. Uh, I had one income stream that was only in New Orleans. Uh, and we was in Atlanta, sitting in a hotel room, trying to figure out how we we're going to move forward with life. And I met a mentor. You know, I thank the most high God. He allowed um, ourselves to have a roof over our head, bread and water and clothing. Um, so that was a big blessing. But he also taught me. Uh, he, he connected me with a mentor that taught me the rules of money. Because at that time, at 25 years old, during Hurricane Katrina, I didn't understand financial literacy. I didn't understand income statements and balance sheets. And I was just told that, hey, listen, you're doing good, Randy. You're making good, good money. Uh, so you deserve that new car, right? That car that I really didn't, couldn't afford. So I went and bought that new car, and it took me in a spot that was a bad financial situation for me because... Again, I had more cash, I had more bills left over at the end of the month that I did cash. So I couldn't have a savings account. My credit score was horrible. But when I met this mentor, he taught me the rules of the money. I was introduced to Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Poor Dad series. And then I started to raise up my credit score. I was able to get negative, inaccurate uh, items deleted off my credit report. I was able to add positive trade lines on it. And I was able to have a savings account, finally. And then in 2006, uh, that was one year later, I bought my first home out in Slidell area. And 30 days later, I bought my first duplex in New Orleans. And then I met my beautiful wife, Veronica, some years, and she was a, a banker you know, at Chase Bank. And when I met her, you know, we co connected at that point. And we flipped our first home in 2016, and uh, we made about $26,000 off that first flip. Uh, we started flipping more and more paying off debts that we have. And we started teaching other people how to do what we did. To be able to rehab it, flip, fix it and flip it, make a nice little chunk, pay off some debts, and to be able to gain access, uh, assets, which is home ownership, right? Real estate. Then we started building new construction in 2016. And now we're in a position that we just want to serve, right? We want to be able to help those to be able to follow our path and follow the many paths that other people. So that's kind of my story. I'm going to hand it over to Veronica. Veronica? Yeah, I won't take up too much of your time, but I was a single mother of two as well. Um, had horrible credit. And it wasn't until about 10 years ago, well, over 10 years ago, when I started working at Chase Bank, I decided, you know what, I'm working in a financial institution where people is coming to me, looking up to me, asking me to guide them with their finances, with their credit. So I need to educate myself and learn about those things as well so that I can help other people. And that's what I did. My credit score was horrible. I went from 500 to over 700. Why? Because I took the time to invest in myself, learn about credit, cleaned up my credit, and I was able to help other people. Um, so I mean, it's over 10, like I said, over 10 years ago, I, I started off in the financial industry. I started off as a personal banker, a business banker, then a mortgage banker. And that's where I pretty much found my passion because then I knew this is a vehicle I can use to build wealth. And not only just me, I can teach others as well to do the same. So today, my husband and I, we are both co-branch managers of a mortgage bank here in New Orleans called Geneva Financial. And um, this is where this is what we do. We help others to discover their dreams in home ownership and wealth building. So turn it over to you. Awesome. Awesome. And so, you know, that brings us to date. You know, we actually launched the uh, Louisiana Housing Authority. Uh, we pre-launched it this year, July uh, 23rd. And it's geared towards home ownership to be able to provide a five star uh, home buying experience to every Louisianian who want to purchase a home. And we're gonna help them well behind the closing. So listen, without further ado, guys, we're gonna jump right into this content. And so give me one moment. Let's get this up and running. So you might be asking, what is Louisiana Housing Authority? Well, very simply, Louisiana Housing Authority is a private, incorporated, trusted advocate for home ownership, foreclosure prevention specialist, and also a housing development organization. 
Our mission, as I mentioned, is to provide a five-star home buying experience. So you, the first step in home ownership is to do exactly what you all are doing today. And that's just to obtain specialized knowledge and skills. And that's what we're gonna do today, guys. We're gonna give you a action plan to follow, a blueprint, so you can be comfortable and confident knowing what the steps are to buy a home. So number two, what's the second step? Is to get pre-approved as a first time home buyer or even if you're buying a third home, right? You need a mortgage loan originator that have some experience that can accurately assess your needs and put you in the right program and products. So my wife and I, we told our story real quick, not to impress you, that wasn't our intention at all. We're not boastful, we're not prideful, but we just wanted to simply share with you and prove to you that we can certainly help you navigate through COVID-19 because we have over 14 years of experience in both real estate and in mortgages. And so in 2009 and 2010, we were able to successfully help people through that stage. So what's the difference between a pre-approval and pre-qualification? It's critical. So a pre-qualification is simply you talking to a mortgage lender and they ask you a few questions over the phone or in person. And some of those questions might be, hey, how much do you have saved up so far for your down payment? Hey, what is your credit score? Are you self-employed or are you employed by someone? How much income that you earn monthly grows? And so based on those questions that you give your mortgage lender, they're gonna give you an answer saying, hey, I think you're ready to go. Notice the word think, right? And that's called a pre-qualification and they issue you a letter so you can move forward. But what we do, we take it a step further. We ask those same similar questions, but we also ask for some documents. Documents such as paycheck stubs, or if you're self-employed, maybe a profit and loss statement and tax return. We're gonna actually pull your credit report. Uh, we wanna verify that information. So now, once we put you in the system, you can be confident knowing that that pre-approval letter that you have, not this is a pre-qualification, but that pre-approval because your document's been seen by your lender, now when you make your offer to the seller, it's more stronger. Today we're in a seller's market, and so it's a lot of competition. So you wanna be able to put yourself in the best position to be able to win that purchase agreement that you sent over, that offer, right? So when a seller look at that pre-approval letter versus the pre-qualification letter, oftentimes they're gonna take that person with the pre-approval letter because they know everything's been verified. Step three, you wanna find the right realtor, right? You want to choose the right realtor after you get pre-approved. And as a first-time home buyer, you need a realtor with experience. Your realtor should be able to represent and assist you every step of the way. And that's why I love working with my wife, because my wife, you know, she's humble, uh, but she's also a licensed realtor. And she became a licensed realtor just for the biggest fact that the houses that we was flipping, the new construction that we was purchasing and building, she was able to represent us uh, as their realtor. So now by her doing such phenomenal things in the community, other people has been reaching out to, to be the realtor. And so she's dual career. So she has that experience and that's why we certainly, uh, you know, Louisiana Housing Authority and Geneva Financial is certainly, you know, we just glad that, you know, you're able to help us. So that's step three, guys. I want you guys to be aware, take a look at this picture. No butts and seats until you get pre-approved, right? <laughs> so, so what you don't want to do is actually Get in the seat of your realtor and you guys are shopping for a home, you fall in love with the dream home and all of a sudden that you can't get this house financed because you never sent over your documents, right? right? Something went wrong in that process. So you wanna make sure you have your pre-approval, then you can go shopping because you don't want that disappointment. You wanna have confidence that you can make that thing happen. The fourth step guys is having the right insurance, right? We have what you call flood insurance if you're in a flood zone. And also you have homeowner's insurance, right? And so these two insurances are very, very critical because at the end of the day, it's there to protect your asset that you're purchasing for your family. The next step is step number five, and that is getting a home inspection. It is very, listen to me clearly, guys. It is very, very important that you hire a professional inspector to inspect the property and make sure that everything is in good working condition. Now you wanna do this during your initial inspection period. While you can, you can ask that seller, they may be able to make some necessary repairs. So Veronica, I, I know, you know, this is one of the things that you're passionate about. Can you give us like some reasons why people should get a home inspection? Absolutely, I'm sure everyone on this call 
heard of don't judge a book by its cover. So the house can be beautiful on the outside and the inside, but we don't know what's going on under the, the roof. We don't know what's going on with the foundation, right? So let's think about this. If you don't get a home inspection and three years later, you want to sell your home or a year later, something breaks and you haven't had an inspector to look at the AC or any other the um, major components in the, in the property, then that becomes your problem. Then you have to take care of it. Or like I said, if you want to sell your home, then a buyer that come in, they get a home inspector and then they tell you, oh, hey, the AC is about to go out. You're like, well, I bought it like this. Well, guess what? They're not going to buy your home until you either replace it or get it fixed. So it's very important to get a home inspection. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, and now I want to you know, be transparent with you guys. This is one of the first out of pocket expenses that you will pay pay for. Um, that home inspection could be about five hundred and fifty dollars somewhere in that area. But it will save you thousands of dollars on the back end. Because Let's assume they have some plumbing problem underneath the foundation and you don't know about it and you purchase their home. That could cost you eight, nine, ten thousand mm-hmm. dollars. But knowing this information up front, you can solve that problem. So just be aware that's one of the inspections uh, yeah. that you want to have and it's an out of pocket cost. Yeah. Um, but it's a third party. Um, mm-hmm. And once they render their services, which give you a full, complete, detailed report, then their job is actually done. And those prices actually vary because mm-hmm. it depends on the property that you're buying. So if you're buying a two unit or fourplex, then I mean, it can go as high as maybe eight hundred, nine hundred dollars. But it's worth it before actually buying it and being stuck with the home for 30 years. Awesome. Awesome. Absolutely. And so now, guys, the next step is that appraisal, right? The appraisal is a home uh, appraisal is an unbiased estimate of the true fair market value of what home what the home is worth. All the lenders uh, are going to audit the appraisal during the mortgage loan process. And Veronica, can you just chime in a little bit about the appraisal process as well? Yes, so the appraisal um, is very important because if a seller say, hey, I would like to sell my home for 250,000. Well, how do we know for sure it's actually worth 250? But as a real estate agent, what I do first is I look up the comps in the area, homes comparable to that home to make sure that we make a fair offer um, based off of what, uh, what the homes are selling for in that, in that area. However, when the appraiser come, come in, they pretty much do the same thing, but their opinion matters over my opinion. That is what the bank is going to look at. They're not going to look at the report I did. They're going to look at the report the appraiser did. So if the appraiser, once they put their report together, if the home value does not come back at 250000 then guess what? We have a problem. So we have to either go back to the table and negotiate um, a lower price if it came in lower. Um, and at the, uh, some people think that the seller is obligated to sell at that price. They don't have to. So you can either choose to back out of the deal and you get your deposit back that you put up or the um, you can come out. If you love the house that much, you can come out of your pocket with the difference. But no bank is going to allow you to overpay for a home. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. So let's dive in to some of the costs, right? Some some costs to consider, right? Uh, number one is going to be your down payment. Number two is going to be prepaid. Number three is going to be closing costs, right? So the down payment, depending on what loan strategy we're using for you, whatever um, that fit your needs best, because we customize our loan products for you. So let's assume that we're using a FHA loan. FHA only requires three and a half percent down, right? So that's your first cost to consider uh, in, re- in going to the table, getting the keys, right? Number two is going to be prepaid. They're called prepaid because your hazardous insurance or your homeowner's insurance we talked about earlier and your flood insurance, those items have to be paid up front. And even your city taxes if you're in the city of New Orleans. For example, if you have a flood court of $600 premium for a year, then that whole $600 has to be paid at the table in full. The third cost to consider is the closing cost. That's what your title company. So whatever title company you choose, that's gonna check title, make sure the ownership um, pattern is good and that you can take title with no problems. Uh, they're going to want to be preparing the paperwork. Usually that's your uh, in, your attorney. Uh, so those costs is available and it's going to be clo- called your closing costs. So you want to expect those things. Now, once we get to the process, 
uh, and we're doing one-on-one, -on -one, we'll break down this information a little bit more because we're doing one-on-one. -on -one. So let's look at step number seven. That's closing, right? Finally, like you're getting the keys in your hand. So what happens at closing? Well, number one, the terms of the agreement between you and your lender are confirmed. Number two, your loan goes into effect and you receive your funds. The lender is going to wire the funds directly to the title company. The title company is going to distribute the funds into, to the seller that's selling the house, to the insurance agent to pay for your premium, to the city of New Orleans to pay for your taxes. Those funds are distributed. Number three, the terms of the agreement between you and that seller are confirmed, right? You have a purchase agreement that's in place, but the agreement is actually executed at that closing table. And the biggest biggest, biggest thing about the closing is that the ownership, right? That ownership actually changes hand. It changes and transfer from the seller over to you, the buyer. You finally get your keys in your hand. So here's are some initial questions that you can expect that the lender will ask you, right? So some questions I'll ask, some questions Veronica may ask is, hey, are you employed or self-employed? Do you have, what, do you know your credit score? What's your monthly gross income? How much do you have saved up so far for your down payment? And do you have any student loans? So those are gonna be some questions that we ask just to see, can we move forward with application or not? If we can't move forward with application, you're not ready based on those questions, then we're gonna give you a clear, concise game plan, an action plan to take, and all you have to do is just follow the action plan and we could take it to the promised land, right? That's it, we're gonna take you to the promised land. So listen, guys, I want you to be aware. We are recording this call, so you not, you don't have to write everything down that's on the slide. We're going to email that out. Uh, just make sure that you inbox Veronica on our Facebook page, my Facebook page, inbox me, text me, call me. Uh, that way you have this information. So what are some initial loan documents you could expect, right? Well, with our mortgage branch, we don't ask for a ton of documents, right? We just want the minimum documents that we could get you approved for comfortably and confidently. Right. Number one, a clear copy of your ID. Two, the last 60 days of your bank statements or 401ks, IRAs, the most recent paycheck stubs, the last 30 days, and the last two years of your W-2s. Notice we didn't even ask you for your tax returns, right? So if you are a 100% employee, we don't need tax returns. Now, it's a little bit different for someone who's self-employed. We're going to ask for those same documents. But that self-employed person, we are going to ask for the full tax returns every page. We're also going to be looking for a profit and loss statement. Why? Why do we want these documents? We're just simply verifying the verbal information that you gave us. So when you say, hey, I have X amount of dollars saved up to close, we want to see X amount of dollars that's in the bank account and so on and so forth. So that's four major qualifications. It's the income, how much you're earning every month, right? That should be a certain percentage. Gross. gross, right? So gross mm -hmm. income before any taxes or insurance come out. Number two, your credit score. Your minimum credit score should be a minimum of 620 right now in this COVID-19 world. Ideally, you want a 640 and above so you could take advantage of the best interest rates. Mm -hmm. Next is cash available to close. And then also your debt to income ratio should be around 45%, but we could go up to 50%, right? So listen, I do want to to talk a little bit about our down payment assistance program. So individual that's a nurse, a doctor in the medical field, a CNA nurse, LPN, RN. Uh, teachers, law enforcement. Teachers, law enforcement, thank you. Um, who else, fighter fighters. Those individuals that serve in that capacity, we have a down payment assistance program uh, that we could pay for up to 33.5% of the down payment if it's an FHA loan and up to 5% if it's a conventional loan. So what that simply means is that, you know, that is money that that person does not have to come to the table because we're paying the closing costs for them. And what's great about it, it's not a city program or a state program, it's actually a national program. And in the past, we've never, repeat, we have never run out of funds, right? So just know that's available as well. So here's are some of the players in the home buying process. We talked about uh, loan officers that basically take the application, uh, ask those type of questions. We have loan partners that actually collect all the documents, processors that's working behind the behind the, uh, the scene, underwriters. We have decision makers, that's, which is which is the underwriter, the closing department, uh, appraisals, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of people, guys, a lot of players involved in the home process. You just don't see them in the background. 
But if you set up the right expectations up front, like Veronica and I do, we make it a smooth process. So what do you need to do, guys? Listen, number one, you want to get prepared by improving your financial situation. So you want to start to increase your savings. You want to minimize your spending. You want to get that credit score at that 620 and above or target a, a 640 and above. You just want to get prepared. And you give me and Veronica a call. Great, you can say something? Yeah, I just want to put in a little insert there with the credit. Before you pay off any collections, you do want to speak to a lender, in particular us, so that we can guide you through that process. Do not pay off any collections prior to speaking with a lender. Awesome, awesome. So yes, guys, so listen, we have a no fee guarantee, right? It's free consultation. You don't pay anything to us until you actually close, right? You get the keys in hand, meaning that we don't charge the application fee, we don't charge uh, uh, fees for pulling your credit. So we wanna be able to have that consultation with you. So that's why we're here. So listen, guys, here's some quick tips, guys. 10 uh, home buying commandments. Number one, I want you to remember, these are commandments. Number one, thou shalt not apply for any new credit of any kind. The idea of all this is that we're taking a, a snapshot of your financial situation. I want you to think about that. If you have a family photo that you take today, boom, and 20 years ago, you look at that same photo, it's going to be the same. And that's how we want your financial situation, your credit score, your bank account, your, pay, your payroll, everything needs to stay the same when we get you approved all the way till you get the keys in your hand. And how you make it stay the same, you just watch these, you just follow these 10 commandments. So again, number one, thou shalt not apply for any new credit of any kind. Number two, thou shalt not close or max out any credit card accounts. Number three, thou shalt not co-sign a loan for anyone, not even your mama, right? <laughs> number four, thou shalt not quit, change a job, or become self-employed during the process. Number five, thou shalt not delete Deplete, excuse me, your savings. Number six, thou should not pay off collection, like Veronica just mentioned so eloquently. Number seven, thou should not make any large purchase, no cars, don't buy no furniture until you get the keys in your hand. Thou should not uh, miss any payments or existing account, on existing accounts. Number nine, thou should not make any large deposits into any of your accounts without checking with your lender. Number 10, thou should not pay earnest money uh, in cash or in any uh, any account that you didn't disclose to in your application. So listen, guys, so this is our direct telephone number, guys. That's my, myself, that's Veronica. Um, if you guys want to take a, a snapshot of this with your phone, you can. But again, we're going to be sending this out uh, via email once the, this thing is rendered. But listen, this is what I want you guys to do. We're going to have a breakout session. This is going to be in seven minutes, right? In seven minutes, we're going to have a breakout session. Uh, Veronica is going to jump on the Zoom call. And all you simply have to do is just hang up on this Zoom call. And you go to zoom.us. Again, that's zoom.us. And you want to type in this meeting ID. So if you're taking notes, write down this meeting ID and also this passcode, right? So the meeting ID, 763-798-6076. And then a passcode, PQ39WR. And so what Veronica will do is going to take some time out to answer some questions that you may have. Um, so if you have written down questions, this is going to be a perfect time for you to get those questions answered. So listen, I'm just excited. I'm fired up. I'm glad you guys was able to attend. If you know anybody else that's looking to refinance, purchase a house, you know, our team is here to serve. That's what we do, guys. So I'm going to wait a minute or two. Uh, so you guys could jot down this information, maybe take a, a shot on your uh, photo on your phone. But again, we're going to have a breakout session in seven minutes. What time it is? Actually, six minutes. Actually, six minutes. So, yeah. So about, what, seven o'clock? Seven o'clock on the dot. So about seven o'clock, Veronica, you'll see her in the breakout section. So, hey, guys, we are excited. Thank you for attending. Thank you all. Oh, it's a slide. Oh, it was right at seven minutes. <laughs> <laughs>
Damn. <laughs> now I put the time on. Right. It was like six fifty three or something. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm.